Hi guys, welcome back to this, which is lesson seven of the Ashdown Isolation series. Now, um, these, this whole series of lessons um, came about because of one thing, uh, which was the NHS Fest, which happened two years ago. Um, the NHS Fest was a wonderful, wonderful charity put together by Ben Pomfret, who was Liam Gallagher's manager. Um, he got together a load of manufacturers and companies in the music industry and basically tried to raise as much money as possible for Britain's National Health Service. Um, he did it. It was a huge success and uh, they banked over £200,000, uh, which is brilliant. It's absolutely amazing. Now, at the time, Mark and Dan Gooday of Ashdown Engineering, they reached out to me and said, hey, Philip, do you fancy uh, chipping in? Uh, and I said, all right, then, how do I do that? Um, and they said, well, go online, do an entire weekend of free base lessons on social media, Instagram, you know, uh, it wasn't TikTok because I'm not that cool. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, stuff like that. Um, and uh, just just put a link in there and direct everybody to NHS Fest, do it for donations. Uh, so I stepped up, paid my little part and, and it was brilliant. I absolutely loved it. And thank you to everybody that attended. You made a real big difference to a lot of people's lives. Um, least of all mine, because that weekend was the catalyst that gave birth to with base in mind which is now my principal academic platform um everything about philip mad if i can talk third party for a second um is is uh first person narrative third person third person narrative i remember that from school um right <laughs> so um everything about my books my bases my career uh my publications through like bass player magazine all that publishing stuff things like that um in my interviews reviews articles uh, it's all on there it's also a place where you can book lessons with me and watch these video lessons so um when you're absolutely bored of netflix um and you can't watch any more kittens on facebook um please pop by say hi uh give us a like and um uh maybe book a lesson who knows it's also a place where you can um where you can pick up my put it the right way around uh, books. <laughs> there it is. This is a core tone, sound, uh, core tone concept series. I forgot the title of my own text then. Um, there's four of those in circulation, but only two of them are published at the moment. The other two are on their way. So check back to the website and you can pick up a copy of those as well. Um, let's get back to the, the hymn sheet. This uh, lesson, lesson uh, seven, the penultimate lesson of the series was all on resolutions. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to go online and give some guys some very basic tips to basically make them better bassists. Um, we'd already talked about triads and how usable triads are, how important triads are if you're writing bass lines, if you're composing uh, solos and all that sort of stuff or little bass fills and things like that. Uh, so we did a lesson on triads. We talked about the cycle of fourths, blah, 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 blah. blah. Um, this lesson was about playing the notes kind of in the right order. Now, there's no right and wrong. Don't get me wrong. But there are ways you can deliver notes that basically make them more sympathetic to their environment. Let me do a quick demonstration. Here's a C major scale. It's not a C major scale. This is a G major scale. I can play C if you want. Here's a G major scale. Use your ears. Listen. It's got a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay, this is how most people learn a scale first time out. G major. Okay. But now I'm going to do something and it's gonna irritate the life out of you, okay? This is it, ready? Thank you. Um, did, if I stopped on the note, the seventh note of the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it, it sounds really uneasy, it sounds really tense, and ah, what are you doing? I want the note to go there and resolve. Well, this is tension and resolution, um, and it's an imperative part of forming chord progressions and forming bass lines, bass fills, solos, all that malarkey, melodies, everything. It's got a lot to do with this stuff. All right. Now, uh, how does it work? What does it actually do? Um, when two notes are too close together, they don't like each other. They kind of, they have a little bit of a fight, a rock. Okay. Um <laughs> The urge to do that. Okay, no. okay, right. So two notes that go together, they fall out. They don't like each other. Um, this is uh, kind of like if you're on a bus or if you're on the subway or the London Tube, whatever, if you're on a train. Um, say it's late at night, you're on your own 
okay? And you're sitting there with your base being protective, okay? That's my base, okay? And then in the middle of the night, some guy gets onto the, em the empty carriage, comes over and sits right next door to you. And you go, why are you sitting there? You could sit anywhere. You're in my personal space. I feel a bit uncomfortable. Can you just go away, please? Now, if that guy sat at the other end of the carriage, you'd feel cool. When notes are far apart, they get on and they sound pretty. But if that guy then comes and sits right next door to you, what happens is it creates tension. That's tension. And what you want to do is to go away. And that is the resolution. That's basically what happens in chords. One chord produces loads of tension because of the semitones. And then it wants to move to another chord. And that's the basic kind of methodology that's employed when you make chord progressions. Snazzy. Right, now, um, when I played that major scale earlier on, I got to this note and you went, ah, oh, well, I did anyway, that drives me crazy. I want to hear that last note. Get up there. There you go, there's my last note. Um, why? What was causing that tension and that to occur? Well, it was all to do with the formula. Now, if you go back earlier in this program, there is a lesson called Scales as Formulas. And one of the first things you learned was um, that a scale, regardless of where you play it, is actually constructed of a formula. In a major scale, the formula is tone, tone, tone is two frets, semitone is one fret, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, or whole step and half step if you're from across the pond, okay, right now. In that example, and most examples of scales that use formulas, you will find um, at least two occasions where there are semitones that are present in the major scale tone tone semitone there's one Temi tone tone semitone there's the second now what you will find is in most cases and there are exceptions to the rule this is not biblical it's just a guide in most cases um, you'll find that the semitone is next door to a note that is either of the triad or of the arpeggio okay meaning root, third, fifth, and occasionally the seventh. Now, generally what happens is if you go from the note of the triad to the semitone, it kind of fights itself. It doesn't want to do that. What it wants to do is play the note of the semitone and move towards the dominant note of the scale, the domineering note of the scale, which is the note of the triad. So to, to, to get rid of the paraphrase and just play it so you can hear it, if I play a major scale, the habitual way you play it is up and down. Now, if I play the first four notes, at C, D, E, F, there's a semitone residing between E and F. But E is the note that helps create the chord. So it's more domineering, it's more prominent than the F. It's the way it is, okay? Now, um, so what would make more sense is if it, instead of going first note, second note, third note, fourth note, if I went first note, second note, fourth note, and resolved it to the third, it's going to sound more musical. Because you get that tension and resolution. And then I can keep ascending. Now there's another occasion in that scale where there's a semitone. And it's the seventh, which is a note of the arpeggio, but the root, which is again a more prominent note, follows it, it succeeds it. So when I play the seven, it should go to the root. Now, it's night and day, that is so much more musical than just doing this. Now imagine if you're writing a line, and you utilize that information, your bass lines, all of a sudden, they sound resolved. They sound complete. They sound correct, although there's no right and wrong in art, okay? It's just one's self-expression. But if you know which ways the resolutions occur, 
it's just going to make you sound like a more efficient bassist. Now, ascending or descending is exactly the same. If we descend, you go from the seventh to the root first. So although you're going down the resolution as ascending, seven to the root, six, five, four to the three, second row. Okay, so originally you went up the scale and down the scale. Now I'm going to go abiding by the resolutions. That sounds great, man. And whenever I'm improvising, I'm just aware that the power those notes have. And you can hear straight away that the lines just sound a little bit more melodic. They sound a little bit more natural. They just sound more comfortable. Now, almost every single scale that uses a formula, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, has two occasions where they're semitones. So you can go through almost any mode and you can find these naturally occurring resolutions and then abide by them. And hopefully your music will sound a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more musical. <laughs> OK, right. So let's get now. Um, here's an example of it. And, and this is an interesting comparison, actually, because uh, the mode I'm going to use now to show you this is very close to our first example. Our first example was the major scale, which is called Ionian. The fourth mode is called Lydian. OK, now the main differences between Ionian and Lydian is that when they're played as a chord, so together, Lydian uh, has an extension of a sharp 11, all right? And it gives you this texture, this really, really nice texture on the chord. Um, a lot of jazzers like sharp 11s. Uh, I like sharp 11s, they're fun. Um, but the sharp 11 does something very different. And that is, if you think of it in an octave below, as a sharp four, okay? So we, we'll talk about the notes in a moment. It actually wants to resolve in a different direction. And that's when all of a sudden you go, oh, yeah, actually, that makes sense. And you start to learn the definitive differences between Ionian and Lydian and what makes them sound different. OK, let's do this practically so you can understand it and it should maintain being as clear as mud. OK, right. <clears throat> Our first example was C major scale, C Ionian. OK, this is AKA, this is Avatar. OK, right now. C Ionian is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. As a really cool exercise, I'm going to play the semitone that resides next to the chord tone first, and then the chord tone. Instantly more musical. Now, if I change that scale so it's no longer um, Ionian <laughs> and it's actually Lydian, OK, Lydian has a different uh, set of notes, obviously, that's why it's a different scale, but its resolutions are different. And that's the important, that's a decisive difference. So here is Lydian. It starts on C. <clears throat> the next note is D. That's the same so far. E is the same. But the next, the very next note is the one that changes. You're going to get an F sharp rather than an F natural and then a G. And then the remainder of the notes, A, B and C, are the same. All right. OK. All right, I'm happy with that. OK. Now, um, when you played that, though, did you notice that in Ionian, the semitone, the four, was above the third? But in Lydian, the semitone, the sharp four, is below the fifth, which is also a note of the triad. It's closer to the fifth than it is to the third. So that means the sharp four wants to go to the fifth. As I look like Saturday Night Live. Hey, Saturday Night Fever, there you go. Um, the sharp four wants to go to the fifth, whereas in Ionian, the natural four wants to go to the third. If we do the same exercise, that's the semitone thing. Root, second, third, sharp four wants to go to the fifth. Descending. Sounds way different, doesn't it? So here is, first of all, Ionian abiding by its natural resolutions. Now here is Lydian abiding by its natural resolutions. It's a 
very different texture, isn't it? It's really cool. Now, look, these are not the laws of the jungle. You must play the fourth before the third, or you must play the sharp four before the fifth. Um, it's just a guide. Some guys pick up a bass, they learn a scale, and then they're asked to improvise, and they immediately go, I sound rubbish. Uh, I'd say that anyway, okay? Um, but what you can do is you can do this very simple exercise. Look for the semitones, play the semitone above the triad first, resolve to the note of the triad, and you're instantly gonna sound better. There you go. See, it's really cool. It just becomes very melodic. It sounds much more like a melody. It's got expression to it. Uh, and at the end of the day, we're all here just to sound a bit better, aren't we? So it's all good. Um, Really great little tip. What I'd suggest you do, guys, is go through um, the major scale or any of the subsequent modes. Find where the semitones reside and then play the semitone, whichever is above the tritone, uh, the tritone, uh, above the triad first and see what happens. Now, in some cases like Dorian, the major six is below the seventh. Still go six to seven. Seven would be the chord tone extended. It's a, it's a note of the arpeggio. Um, but it's still moving that direction. Um, and you'll get a whole different perspective of all of the modes. Here is the natural minor scale. Great sound. Here's the natural minor scale, Aeolian, with the semitones abiding by the natural uh, resolutions. Root, second to flat three, four, flat six to five. That sounds great. There you go. So you can start to see how these sort of interact with one another. And that's what this lesson is all about. Um, take one scale. Here's C major scale. Up, down. Move it up a semitone. Up, down. This is called planet chromatic. Up a semitone. Up, down. So I'm doing press-ups. Up, down. Okay. E, F. Uh, whatever that one is, F sharp. G. Okay. Stop doing that, guys. Um, it's good for your dexterity. It's good for cataloging the notes, but you will instantly sound more musical if you play them abiding by the resolutions. C. C sharp. D. The next one. <laughs> Can't talk and play. How do guys sing and play? That is a lesson in itself. Yolanda Charles is amazing at that. I absolutely suck at it, as you can hear. Okay, there we go. Um, guys, this is just useful tips for bass. I uh, hope it's really handy. Um, it was the penultimate lesson uh, in the Ashdown Isolation series that came out two years ago. Um, and I thank everybody that watched those lessons, and more importantly, all the guys that started following it with bass in mind. We are a teeny, tiny little bass platform. But you know what? We've had uh, enemy ba battle of bands winners. We've had book publishers. We've had Grammy nominations, um, all from our students. And because of that, I think we've achieved something pretty substantial in the last two years. And I'm very, very proud of it. Guys, I'm Phil Mann. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I'll see you next time.